Everyone calls him Uncle Al because that's where he lives, on top of an Alp. Well, some mountain in Switzerland, anyway. When he was younger, he drank, you know, and gambled away practically the entire family fortune. And when he joined the army, well, they say that he killed a man and that he had to go to court, and then things took a very nasty turn. My dear, no one is more appalled than I am at the prospect of leaving the child with a man like that. But I have to work, and there is no way I'll get a good position with a child along. And Lord knows I'm sure I've done my best for her since my poor sister died. All right, Heidi. Yes? May I have a drink of water, please? What's your name, then? Heidi. What's yours? Peter. What are you doing up here, anyway? I've come to live with my grandfather. Uncle Alp? That's what they call him, I think. Rather you than me. to your grandfather, then. Hello, Grandfather. I'm Heidi. Your granddaughter. Why have you brought her here? She's come to live with you. What? I've done all I can for her these past few years. Now it's your turn. Don't be ridiculous, girl. She's gone, Grandfather. Gone? Then you'd better hurry up and catch her, hadn't you? But she said she only had one ticket to Frankfurt. You can't stay here.
Where will I sleep, Grandfather? Where you like. This one's Daisy, this is Dusky. It's Peter. Come to take them up to high pasture. Could I go with them? I suppose so. Only wash your face first, so the sun won't laugh at how dirty it is. Presumably, you have no objections, General of the Goats. Suppose not. This is her lunch. <laughs> See, she gets all of it. Hmm? And mind you, look after her, especially around that ravine. The sun can't laugh at me there, Grandfather. Hmm. See you later, then. Trouble than the rest of them put together. I think he's lovely. What's that? A hawk, of course. Does it live up here? Hell's a nest. Top of the peak there. Can we go up and see it? I'm silly. And the goats can't get up there. Why does it make that noise? 
I don't know. Where's that stupid finch gone now? Oh, no! And it could have been killed. He's just a baby. <laughs> no, I said. Promise me more of that cheese tomorrow, then. Tomorrow and every day. And the bread, just as long as you promise to never, never beat any of them ever again. Promise. Bye, Peter. Can I come with you tomorrow, then? If you like. I brought you these. No, what happened to the grandfather? Perhaps they wanted to stay in the sun. I'll never ever pick any more ever again. Why does it croak like that? He's jeering. And all the people who live down in the village and make trouble for one another. He's telling them, why don't you mind your own business? Or climb to the top of a mountain sometime. we will all be a lot better off. Father? Making cheese. Can I try? My hands clean. All right, go on then. You'll need to do it much harder than that. That will be Peter. All right, run along. I'll finish off. Soon. How do you know? I just know. My granny. She says she'd like to meet you. What's she like? Ancient. And blind. She sees people through her fingers. Really? I'd like to see her do that. What about tomorrow then? All right. Forget about tomorrow. I won't. Come on. In you go, Daisy. Grandfather, have you made that? It, it is just something for you to sit on by the fire when the winter comes. With me. I'll be going to meet his granny tomorrow. Will that be all right? Yeah, I suppose so. Just have to be patient, won't she? And so will you. Now, 
Go get some warmer clothes on. Where are you going? See Heidi? The snow's too deep, Peter. Don't worry. I'll be all right. I'll be back before dark. My son. Your father. He died in an accident. Him and your mother. Don't you remember them at all? I was only a baby, Auntie, she said. What was he like? My father. Not like you, actually. Why don't you ever go down to the village, Grandfather? Oh, I... I go when I have to. Peter! Are you out of your mind, coming up here before the snow's even frozen? I'm here, aren't I? Hello, Heidi. Hello. So, General, you're going to have to start chewing a pencil again, huh? Chewing a pencil? In the winter, Peter has to go to school. And he finds chewing a pencil helps a lot. Don't you, Peter? What do you do at school, Peter? Learning to read. You're right. Not that I'm ever going to bother to. Why not? Because it's a waste of time. Why does a goat head need to read and write anyway? Well, that would depend, wouldn't it? On whether the goat herd wanted to spend the rest of his life being a goat herd. Hmm? I have to go. Have you ever been to school? The nearest school was miles when I lived with Aunt Daddy. I mean, she was too busy to take me. Mm -hmm. When can I go and visit Peter's granny? When the snow has frozen over. When will that be? Once Christmas is over. Christmas? Yes? Are you all right? Oh, yes, Grandfather.
Close your eyes, Harry. Why? Just turn your back and close your eyes. You can open them now. Grandfather, a sledge! Be careful, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Your Christmas present. I'm sorry it's a bit late. Oh, Grandfather, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, you said you wanted to see Peter's granny. Off we go. Make sure to tell Peter to have you back home well before dark. Heidi, of course. Come in, welcome. Mother, it's Heidi. Heidi? Oh, such warm hands. Where's Peter? He's at school. But how did you get down here, child? My grandfather brought me down on a sledge. What does she look like, Bridget? Very pretty. In fact, beautiful. Oh, yes. Certainly that. Most welcome she was. So how did you get on with your reading today? Peter, you need to learn to read. Why? <sighs> Can you read, Heidi? No. See? One of these days, one's gonna play this place right off the mountain. <laughs> creak and the shutters bang and granny gets really frightened when the wind blows in case it blows them right off the mountain oh yes i just wish there was somebody who could do something about it somebody who really knew about these things grandfather can you think of anyone
Good morning, my friend. May I have a word? The child, Heidi. What about her? I understand the teacher has sent you several messages pointing out that she should be coming to school in the winter. So? So, what do you intend to do with her? I certainly shan't be sending her to any school. But then what will become of her? She'll grow up with the goats and the birds. Uh, they at least won't give her any bad ideas. She's not a goat or a bird, man. Next winter, she really must start going to school. And just how do you suggest we get her there? Hmm? You really think that I would send a girl, a little child of her age, down the mountain? You could come back to Dorfley to live. What sort of life is that for a young girl stuck up there? Well, she loves. Take my word for it. But certainly a better one than she would have down here. My people who despise me. My friend, people don't think half as unkindly of you as you seem to think they do. Frankly, Pastor, I don't care much how they feel. Just as long as they leave us alone. chance to get my breath back, I'll tell you. Heidi, darling, how well you look, child. Hello. I asked you what you wanted. Well, you must have realized that I always intended to come back for her. What? Well, of course I did. In fact, since then, I've spent my every waking hour trying to find a good home for her. And now I'm delighted to say that I've found one. She already has a good home. Here. Living on top of a mountain like a hermit. Now, the people I work for have rich relations in Frankfurt who have a child who's wheelchair-bound and who longs for a little playmate. Some simple, unspoiled child of her own age. Mm -hmm. In fact, someone just like Heidi, right? That's right. And how much are these rich relatives offering you for providing this little playmate? How dare you? And how typical of you to think of that. Because I know you. I know you well enough to know that there has to be something in it for you. For you to suddenly turn up here again after dumping her on me the way you did. Has it ever occurred to you to at least try to find out what Heidi might think of this idea? She's still a child. She's also a human being. Certainly not some chattel to be traded in whenever you find it convenient. You certainly are the most selfish brat I ever met. And what about you? Well, it's fairly obvious why you're so determined to hang on to her, isn't it? You're going to need someone to look after you when you're no longer able to fend for yourself. Never mind that you're an old man now. In fact, a very old man who, let's face it, hasn't much longer to live. And when you do die, what's going to happen to her then, eh? But you won't be here then, will you? So why should that bother you? I understand that you're refusing to send her to school. If you think that I'm going to stand by, and see my poor sister's only child brought up like some sort of illiterate peasant, then you're wrong. If I have to take this to court, I shan't hesitate. And then, well, God knows what might come out about you. Take her, then. And spoil her. But don't you ever bring her back here to me again. Grandfather! Go on! Get out of here, the two of you! Now, Heidi. No. Now, don't be silly, child. I don't want to go with you. I want to see your grandfather. After what you've just heard. I'm sure he didn't really mean it. Of course he meant it. He's famous for that violent temper of his. You do know, don't you, that he killed a man in a brawl? Why else do you think he lives alone here, hiding away on top of a mountain? I don't believe it. 
Believe what you like. It's what a judge will believe that counts. And you don't want him thrown into jail, do you? Or worse. If I go with you, I can't come back, can't I? Well, of course you can, whenever you like. Now go on, get your things. Frankfurt. What's your name, child? Heidi. That can't be your proper name, surely. What were you christened? I don't remember. Is the child half-witted? Or simply impertinent? Uh, no, ma'am. It's just that she's never been in a house like this before. She was christened Adelheid. How old is she? Oh, to be honest with you, I can't remember, but I should think about ten. I'll soon be nine. What? I distinctly remember telling you we wanted someone of Clara's own age, and she's eleven. What books have you read? None. None? I haven't learned to read yet, nor has Peter. He thinks reading's a waste of time. Peter? The goat herd. What have you learned to do, then? Make cheese. Really, did you? Uh, beg pardon, Mum, but you did tell me that what you were looking for was a more unusual sort of child. And Heidi, I mean, Adelheid, is certainly unusual, if I might presume to make a suggestion. Why don't I leave her with you for a few days? And then if you still think she's unsuitable, I'll take her back. Oh, yes, please, let's do that, Miss Rottenmeyer. Just for a few days. Very well. Tinette? Tinette! Now what? Have a room prepared for her. <sighs> Dinner's at eight o'clock. Don't be late. If there's one thing I simply abhor, it's unpunctuality. I was promised a certain amount to find someone, Miss Rottenmeyer. For finding someone satisfactory. I'll see you soon. In a few days, yes? Do you want to be called Heidi or Adelheid? My name's Heidi, and that's what I shall call you. Are you glad you came here? No. But I will be going home in a few days with some nice white rolls for Granny. 
So that will be all right. <laughs> oh, you do say the funniest things, but I'm sure we'll have great fun together. I'm sure I can find you something. I've only just finished laying the table. Well, then you can start doing something else. Ungrateful. What are you looking at? You remind me of Peter the Goat Boy. Oh, do I? And he's quite handsome, too. I might have that as well. Put the dish down, Sebastian, and bring the vegetables. <coughs> never, never, never speak to Sebastian during a meal. Unless it's to give him an order. Now. You. Hmm. Are to address me? A man. That's for Clara. It's up to Clara to say what you're to call her. doing there? Looking for grass. in the mountains. It's beautiful. There's lots of grass and trees. And when the sun sets, it looks like there's fire on the mountains. I should like to see that sometime. 
Right, Dora. Time for your nap. But I'm not a bit sleepy, Miss Ottenmeyer. Have none of that. As for you, Adelheid, while she's sleeping, you will, of course, sit quietly in your room, as usual, until you're called. The child, Heidi. Now, what about her? She seems to have vanished. What's happened to her? Didn't you hear, Pastor? I ate her. Oh, where are you going? Good morning, Mr. Usher. Uh, you have a new pupil today. Right, ladies. To begin, please open your books at page six. <clears throat> Sort of problem with the windows, they miss. Could you open it, please? Of course. There. Try standing on this. Just stony streets. We are in the middle of the city, miss. Where could I go? To see the whole of the valley? Oh, you need to get somewhere high, I suppose. Like that church tower there. See? The one with the golden ball. Yes. Where's Clara, please? Having her afternoon nap, of course. What else at this time of the day? Another tuppence. Very well. What do you two want? I don't want anything. But I want to climb to the top of the tower. What for? To see what I can see from there. Be off with you. But please! Just this once, please. Oh, well. If it makes you happy. Come on. trees 
Frankfurt are in Frankfurt? Does he think trees have more sense than to live here in Frankfurt? There's something else you can see, mind. If I just cheer you up a bit. Over there, in the trunk. Oh! <laughs> Would you like one? To keep? Of course you can. In fact, you can have more than one if you like. They're no use to me. In fact, between you and me, the ones that aren't taken are for the bucket. The bucket? The water. You wouldn't. I can't do anything with them. I can't afford to feed them. Then I'll take them all. Right. But how will I carry them home? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll bring them round to you. It's just... To... Could, could, could you just tell me where it is you live? Mr. Sessiman's house. Mr. Sessiman? Oh. <laughs> right. Couldn't I take two now? One for me and one for Clara? Of course you can. Thank you for showing me the way back. Hey, where's my fourpence? I'll get it for you. There you are, miss. Come on. Oi, my fourpence! What's the idea, running off like that? I just wanted to find a church with the gold ball on top. And there's this boy. Never mind about him. You're in dead trouble. They're already at the table. Come on. I'll speak to you later, Adelheid, about your unpunctuality. Suffice to say, at the moment, that it was extremely naughty to go roaming off like that. I beg your pardon? How dare you mock me in such a fashion! I didn't. That'll do! <laughs> do you hear? Funny. I'm sorry, Miss Clara, but I'm afraid you're going to have to leave those in my charge. I'm under strict orders from Miss Rottenmeyer to get rid of them. Oh, no, Sebastian! Not the bucket! Oh, good Lord, no, Miss! What do you take me for? Some sort of savage? What's she going to do with them? There's a place in the attics where Miss Rottenmeyer never goes. The mice, you see. What do you want? My fourpence. Your fourpence? That's what she owes me. Who does? Clara. Miss Clara to you. And for your information, Miss Clara never goes out into the street. She can't even walk. How could she possibly owe you fourpence? It wasn't her who promised me. It was the other girl. What girl? Brown hair, sort of a uh, red dress. Ah, that girl. And this would be yesterday afternoon, right? That's right. I suppose you'd best come in. Ah, 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 ah. Now, you just wait there. Four pence. Oh, well, no matter. 
Give him this, Sebastian. Oh, no. I'll do it. I promise I'll pay you back, Clara. Your fourpence clear off. What on earth? And just what is going on here now? Oh, no. Yes, for the little miss. What is that? Ow! Oh. And what is that? Uh, this is a, a little gift for the Miss Mom. Uh, he, he said... Well, don't just stand there. Open it, man. Open it. Open it. Open it, man. Open it. Um, um... Oh, uh, dear. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 so soon, Miss Rottenmeyer. She most certainly does. Only, I was just wondering what my father would think about that. Your father? Well, he will be home tomorrow. And I suppose it is just possible that he would prefer to make the decision himself. All right, my dear. Hello, Heidi. Hello, Grandfather. Would you like to make some cheese? Yes. <laughs> Clara, my dearest, how are you? All the better for seeing you, Father. Oh, I've missed you. <laughs> and this is Heidi. Ah, oh, Heidi. But I understood from Miss Rottenmeyer in her last letter that her name was Adelheid. That's what Miss Rottenmeyer calls her, but her real name is Heidi. So tell me, Heidi, are you and Clara good friends? Oh, yes, sir. I'm delighted to hear it. Mr. Sesson. Miss Rottenmeyer? If we could have a word, sir, in private. But of course. I'll see you later. And this was when you stood on this tortoise, was it, Miss Rottenmeyer? After being attacked by at least one of the felines, yes. But Lord. Frankly, sir, it makes my skin crawl just touching them. And all this was the child Heidi's doing, you say? Absolutely. So what you're saying, Miss Rottenmeyer, is that you don't consider her a suitable companion for my daughter? What I'm saying is, Mr. Sessiman, that I'm not entirely sure that Adelaide is quite right in the head. Here, Clara. Heidi, would you mind bringing me a glass of water? Fresh water? Fresh cold water, ideally. Of course, sir. Now, Clara, tell me about these cats that Heidi apparently smuggled into the house. They weren't cats, Papa. They were kittens, and she only did it to save their lives. Oh. They were going to be put down. So what's happened to these animals? Well, Sebastian's hidden them in the attic until he can find good homes for them. Oh, but please, Papa, let me keep a couple of them. And I know the doctor said that they weren't good for my condition, but I'm sure I'll be all right now. So who told you that, darling? That the doctor said that they were bad for your condition? Miss Rottenmeyer. Miss Rottenmeyer thinks that we should send Heidi away anyway. Oh, no. 
know, Papa. Since she came, wonderful things have happened nearly every day. And she does make me laugh, so... <laughs> oh, thank you, Heidi. My, this is cold. I got it from the fountain, outside, on the street. You went out for it? You did want a cold, sir. Thank you, Heidi. Oh, terribly sorry, sir. You wanted a word, sir. I did, Rotmeyer, yes. I need to return to Paris tomorrow for some important meetings. And I know that I can, as always, leave the household in your more than capable hands. But of course, sir. Now, as for the little Swiss miss, it seems that Clara has formed quite an attachment to her. And I think it would be wiser not to send her back just yet. As you wish, sir. And despite her little idiosyncrasies, she will, of course, be treated with kindness and understanding at all times. But of course, sir. And if you find her too much to manage on your own, help is at hand. Oh? My mother will be arriving shortly for her usual visit. Now go to your room at once and sit quietly until you're called. Are you clean? Yes. Well, in that case, you're to go to the study. Your friend, is it? Yes, this is her, Grandmama. Come in, my dear. Let me have a good look at you. Good evening, Madam Gracious. Oh, what? Is that what you call people in the mountains? Oh, no, we never call anybody that. No, here either, I can assure you. I'm Grandmama, and that's what you shall call me. Now, you will remember that, won't you? Yes, Grandmama. And what's your name? My real name's Heidi. But Miss Rottenmeyer thinks it should be Adelheid. So I answer to that as well. I'm sure you'll agree, madam, that it's better for her to be called by a name which isn't a cause of ribaldry and embarrassment. My dear Rottenmeyer, if Heidi is her name, then that is what she shall be called. As you wish, madam. You sent for me, madam? Yes. Clara's taking her afternoon nap, isn't she? Yes, madam. And what does Heidi do in the afternoons? Sits quietly in her room until called, madam. I see. In that case, bring her down, will you? I want to give her some books I've found. I hardly think that books would be of any use to her, madam. She hasn't even learned her alphabet yet. Strange. She doesn't seem stupid. But then appearances can often be deceptive, madam. Aren't they? Come in. Heidi, come and sit over here. I found some books for you to read. But I can't read, Grandma. You at least look at some of the pictures. My dear child, whatever's the matter? This reminds me of... Oh. You miss it very much, don't you? Grandfather especially. Even if he doesn't want me anymore. 
And little Finch. Little Finch? He's a ghost. Ah, I see. Well, why don't you look at some other books? Perhaps the pictures won't upset you so much. But I like this book. And the pictures in it are lovely. And it has a lovely story to go with it. <sighs> if only you could read it. Only I told you. I can't read. It's too hard. Who ever told you that? Peter. Peter? The goat herd. Oh. Anyone can read, Heidi. Would you like me to teach you? Oh, yes, please. But you'd be wasting your time. We'll see. when I witnessed it just now. How can this be? I asked myself, how is this possible? But Miss Rottenmeyer, she's reading aloud to Mrs. Sazerman at this moment. Rottenmeyer. Oh, yes, I madam. think it's high time we did something about Heidi's wardrobe, don't you? Her clothes don't seem entirely appropriate somehow for a companion to my granddaughter. I feel sure we can find some old dresses of Flora's that could be cut down to fit her. What I had in mind was taking her into town before I leave and buying her some clothes of her own. Nothing too grand, you understand, would only embarrass the child, so perhaps you'd make the necessary arrangements. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It's yours now, dear. To keep? Yes. Even when I go home? But of course. But of course, you won't be going home, Adelheide. Grandmama will be leaving soon. And then Clara will need you more than ever. Won't you, Clara, dear? Oh, God. Oh. Bye, children. Bye. Bye. to pieces, child. What are you going to do with it? Burn it, of course. You have new clothes now. Not the hat as well. And will you kindly explain what these are doing here? They're rolls. I can see what they are. Or rather were. What I want to know is what you're doing with them. They're for Granny. Granny? Peter's granny. She finds black bread too hard to chew. She'll find this a lot harder. Must be weeks old, some of them. Don't you realize rolls are to be eaten the day they're baked? Remove them at once, Tinette. 
Something you, you haven't eaten for days. Something wrong with your food, is there? I'm not hungry. Then will you kindly leave the table before you put the rest of us off? Wretched child. Doesn't appreciate how very fortunate she is. However, if she insists on starving herself to death, so be it. So, how are you feeling now, Heidi? Much better, thank you. And where were you off to last night, then, when Sebastian found you? I don't know, Doctor. You'd been dreaming, hadn't you? And what were you dreaming about? It's the same dream I have every night. Oh. Where I'm back in the cottage with Grandfather. And there's lots of stars. And when I go out to see the stars, all I see is roofs and chimneys. The roofs of Frankfurt? Yes. Don't you like being in Frankfurt, then? I suppose I do. Honestly. But you do miss the cottage and your grandfather? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's really quite simple. The child's been sleepwalking because she's obviously quite desperately homesick. And when she came here, she was positively blooming. However, the only thing that matters now is what can we do about it? My dear chap, there's only one thing you can do. I realize Clara will be upset, but Heidi must be returned to her grandfather at once before she pines away altogether. Allow me to take that for you, miss. Oh, Heidi, I'm going to miss you so much. And I'm going to miss you too, Clara. Terribly. But we will see each other soon, won't we? Someday. Of course, Clara. And now I can write you lots and lots of letters. Now, 
quite sure you know exactly where you're going. Oh, yes. Mr. Sesman has arranged to send the rest of your things along later. Thank you, Sebastian. And thank you for bringing me home. Goodbye, Heidi. I miss you. How should I know? I'm here, Peter. I brought him back with me from Frankfurt. What's his name? Boris, because he's very bold. So, 
coming up the hall past you then? I don't think so. It's more fun than staying down here with that old grump. Don't call him that. He was really hurt when I left. I know he was. So he said he told you to leave? Only because he was upset. I should have never gone with her, Peter. She practically had to drag you down to the station. I saw that myself. I still couldn't run away. I did try to lots of times. Only in my sleep, though. Oh. What are you doing back here, anyway? They sent me home. Uh, why? Because you did something bad? No. I just wanted to come home. Well, anyway, now you're here, I suppose. You'll have to have somewhere to sleep. You know where your bed is? brought you back here anyway? Aunt Dee, I suppose. No, Sebastian. Who's that? Mr. Sesaman's servant. He was my friend. So what happened to your Aunt Dee? I don't know. I never saw her again after she left me in Frankfurt. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's going to be awfully cold tonight. I suppose we better get that kitten of yours inside as well. Right, Grandfather. Thank you so much for taking me back. And I really am very sorry that I left. you got back from Frankfurt, you've always had your head stuck in a stupid book. A book can't be stupid, Peter. People will read them all. You should learn to read yourself, Peter. I could teach you, you know. No, thanks. Then you know what will happen to you, don't you? What? One day, they'll send you down to the big school where all the teachers wear top hats, and when they find out you can't read, they'll all make fun of you. <laughs> They wouldn't. They would, you know. Can you really teach me how to read? Of course. Where are we going, Grandfather? You'll see. It is the house I used to live in before I moved up the mountain. And I thought that we might move in when winter comes. If nothing else, it will make it easier for you to get to school. Would you like that? Just as long as you promise we can move back up to the mountain in the summer. make this house really cozy.
Come here, Mr. Collar. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome home, my dear. You're getting good at that. Good. Good. I'm supposed to give you this. It's, it's for you. From Frankfurt. You can still change your mind and come with us, you know. I think not, madam. Thank you. You really do hate her, don't you? I'm sure I don't know what you mean, madam. Oh, I think you do. From what I can gather, you've resented her bitterly ever since she first set foot in this house. What I can't for the life of me understand is why. She's such a sweet child. If you say so, madam. You mean you don't think so? I think, madam, the child has a quite remarkable facility for making people believe she is. As to whether or not any of it is genuine, madam, on that I prefer to keep my own counsel. Thank you. I feel sorry for you, Rotten Meyer. Why, madam? Because I see people as they really are. What can you possibly see in her that none of the rest of us can? Unless, of course, it's yourself. A long time ago. Myself, madam. What a magnificent place to live, Mr. Collar. A king would envy you this. You're right, you know. A man could scour the face of the earth and not find a better place to retire to than this. Something you should think about, perhaps. Oh, yes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you did, though? We could come and see you every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember when I had more delicious cheese. Oh, oh, oh. I hope the mountain air <laughs> will make up for any deficiencies in my cooking. But now, I'm afraid, we really must return to the inn in the village before the light goes. Can't I stay here tonight, Grandmama? She could stay with me. I've got lots of room. Well, I would certainly have no objections, if Grandfather hasn't. She could stay for the entire summer if she wants. Oh, could I, Grandmama? Please. What does the doctor think? I think it would probably do her the world of good. But would Mr. Crawler be able to cope? Clara's hardly in the best of health and completely confined to her chair. When I was in the army, I worked in the field hospital, so I... I expect I could just about manage. And I could help as well. In that case, I'm sure your father would agree. Thank you, Grandmama. Thank you. That will be Peter. You have to meet him, Clara. You can give him his present. Peter, this is my friend Clara. Hello, Peter. Hello. This is for you. All the way from Frankfurt. Thank you. She also brought a warm shawl for Granny and a dress for your mother as well. Oh, yeah? Why doesn't he like me? I think perhaps he's a bit jealous. 
Most days I go up to high pasture, but for the last few days I haven't been able to. I wish I could go up to high pasture one day. You've told me so much about it. I'm sure Peter will be pleased to see us. This is where he usually is. Oh, never mind. I'm sure he can't be very far away. Here, Clara. Do you like the mountains? Yes. Aren't they amazing? So, put your arm around me. Stand up again. Come on. But you just did, Clara. Try. I can't, I tell you. Give her a hand, you two. <laughs> All right. Now let's go of our arms. <laughs> now walk towards me. <laughs> and that's what we are going to do every day from now on. Hmm? For the rest of the summer. Right. And Peter. Peter's going to help, aren't you, Peter? Yes.
did you come and live up here? Because I wasn't welcome in the village. Why? Because they'd heard that I'd killed a man in a fight. And had you? There are lots of things that I've done in my life that I regretted, Doctor. But that was never one of them. Well, it's a wonderful thing you've done for Clara, Mr. Collar. And if there's anything at all that any of us can do for you, anything, you've only to say. What do I need that I haven't already got? Having said that, uh, there is one thing, I suppose. Oh? I'm not stupid, Doctor. I'm not just old. I am beginning to feel old. What happens to Heidi when I go, though? That's what bothers me. I'll be retiring myself soon. I've already got my eye on a property down in Dorfley. In fact, it was Heidi who first put the idea into my head. And it goes without saying, of course, that if she is ever left alone, there'll always be a home for her there with me and Mrs. Classen. I can't tell you how relieved I am to hear that. Are you all right, Grandfather? Oh, I'm fine. He heard his back saving my life when Clara first came here. Yes, I heard about that. And it still hurts him. Perhaps I should take a look at it? It's nothing, really. He always says that. <laughs> we'll take a look anyway, shall we? As you wish. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better go and see to the horses. Are you sure you're all right, Grandfather? I'm fine, in spite of your nagging. I love you, Grandfather. <laughs> and God knows I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.